<laughs> right. Speaking of haters, second stream, <laughs> where we talk all things other tech. Mm -hmm. Kicking it off with your boy, Mark <laughs> Zuckerberger. Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, if you don't know, on the Instagrams um, of rapper Lil Boots, he called uh, him Mark Zuckerberger um, because he canceled his... his uh, <laughs> He shut down his IG a couple of times and he was oh, pleading he? with Matt. Yeah, because he was doing some foul stuff um, mm -hmm. that was completely highly inappropriate. And he was pleading with Mark Zuckerberger to uh <laughs> to restore his account. I don't know. I don't know if he was gonna get some sort of platitudes calling him Zuckerberger. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know this man's name. Like, Zuckerberger. But yeah, so uh back to the topic at hand. Um uh, Meta Connect, which is uh, Meta Facebook's uh, uh, conference, they announced um, their new AR VR headset, uh, Meta Quest Pro. Mm -hmm. It will be available for purchase on October 25th, which is why I mentioned before oh, it yeah. would be shady and funny if Apple mm -hmm. decided to have its event on the 25th of October. But the mm -hmm. kicker is. Their MetaQuest Pro AR VR headset is coming at you at a whopping fifteen hundred American. Dollars. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Yes, it is a lot of money. But Mark Zuckerberger would not be Mark Zuckerberger if he did not throw some apple shade um, at the announcement of his event. I think he was trying to get ahead of people looking at the sticker shock. Um, but he was basically criticizing Apple for, I'll, I'll read the, the, the lead in for the article. The mm -hmm. Facebook founder effectively criticized Apple for its unknown pricing strategy on its unannounced Apple headset. So what uh, Mark Zuckerberger, what he said was, quote, is typically people build hardware and they try to make a profit off of it where if you're Apple, you build hardware and you charge as much as you can get for it. Mm -hmm. He said he's taking a different route. Quote, I do not think that having someone come into the space and basically say, we're going to build the best hardware in the space and we're going to basically and we're going to basically sell it at a break even point and in some cases at a loss. Bro, you just announced a $15. $1,500 AR VR headset and you and somebody else's uh, business about watching, watching somebody else's pockets, right? Something right. that has not been announced, something that has not been pressed. for all we know, there is no Apple glasses, right? Who knows? Um, Cause it hasn't been announced friend. Right. So yeah, that's, you know, that's number one rule in my rule book. You don't watch other people's pockets. <laughs> Zuckerberg <Right. laughs> needs to be worried about, <laughs> His products and this fifteen hundred dollar AR VR headset, right? Which, according to this, or according to his own wor words, we're going to build the best hardware in the space. We're going to basically sell it at break even or at a loss. So, you mean oh, to yeah. tell me fifteen hundred dollars is break even, or you're selling it at a loss? Number one, that don't sound like nothing Mark Zuckerberg would do. Maybe some business, maybe some other companies out there create products as a write-off like you think of apple for L look at apple for example right apple tv and not just the actual hardware all of the the streaming um the shows all the mm -hmm. content i'm pretty sure apple is not making money on all of that content but they're using it as a tax write-off same thing with netflix Netflix is not making all this money off the content. They're doing it. Their their ads. ability. To, they're doing <laughs> not only ads, but they're they're offsetting it with how much money they make. Right. So when in a bit again, I'm not going. It's get better into to business. take a, to them. It's taking a loss, but technically you need, it's a benefit. You need expenses. It helps their tax liability. Exactly. So, um, you Zuckerberg can't say Apple is just going to build a product. And just figure out how much money they can charge for it. Apple has history of making content products and not necessarily being able to charge as much as freaking possible. So that's number one. Again, number two, 
you need to be worried about your own products if you're charging fifteen hundred dollars for this thing and you're not making a profit off of it. That's a whole nother conversation in like and of itself. You're gonna want to make money from this. So how do you right. plan on doing that, jacking up the price? But my thing is this is your company's main event. Why are you talking about somebody else? Why are and you worried about what somebody else is doing? Pixel, why are you on there talking about your crash detection? Do you see Apple talking about y'all? No. Even when they do <laughs> benchmarking for other products, they don't mention your name. They don't mention your likeness. They don't say jack crap about you. But here and, you are on your and, biggest stage in front of mm -hmm. all of your people talking about somebody else and what they doing. And, well, you just said $1,500 for this MetaQuest Pro. Right. I mean, companies are going to throw jabs at each other. But like you like you mentioned, at the very least, Apple has benchmarks and statistics to back it up. They just don't make weird accusations and talk about hardware that don't even exist. Apple don't even have no headsets, but Zuckerberg is already out here talking about how much they're going to charge for it. It's like, man, mind your business. Mind, mind your business. your business, friend. <laughs> and my thing is, I have the Oculus. Those things, I think it was like, was it $300 or $400? Going from a headset that's $300, $400 to $1,500, that's like threefold the price. Yep. yep. That's and it's, and it's the big. Price. According to this picture, I don't know if this is the actual product or not. It's big, it's bulky, and they talk about augmented reality. I ain't going outside with this thing I'm on my head. I'm not walking around with this, <laughs> especially as a black person. No, right. right. <laughs> and like it has like the big back headrest. Yeah. Like how long? How sustainable is this with the battery life? It can't yeah. be. You can't use this all day. And then right. when the battery dies, what are you supposed to do with it? Go back to your car and drop it off. This million right. dollars not gonna leave me. Like, what are you supposed to do with this? Yep. Ultimately, he just needs to mind his own business. Stay out of Apple business. <laughs> Talk <laughs> about Meta business at Meta's conference. <laughs> he thought he was doing something, but he really just made it look worse. All right, that's enough about Zuckerberger. Digital license plates have been approved for all of California vehicles. So I mm -hmm. think we talked about this before, but I want to say, was it in Michigan where um, they were going to do this? I can't remember. I think the company was in Michigan. Oh, the company was in Michigan. Okay. I think so. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think the company was in Michigan. Oh, okay. but uh, I think we did talk about this. We Yeah, we did talk about this because it was a subscription based thing. Yep. We were l lamenting that up. Oh, another another product another that's going to want money out of my pocket Monthly. every single month. Yep. <laughs> and that is true. In this case, they're calling them e-ink plates, mm -hmm. e-ink plates, and subscriptions start at $19.95 per month. So Gavin Newsom, who is the governor over in California, just signed a bill into law, uh, AB 984, which makes the e-ink e displays a legal alternative to traditional metal plates. Um, they had a pilot program um, back in 2018. Obviously it went well because they are now rolling it out. Um, so it's one of those things where um, it's cool. It could be cool, but it's not one of those things where every Californian is going to use a digital plate. This is definitely an opt in type of situation. Um, the digital plate manufacturer is called Reviver. I believe that's how you pronounce that. And, um, back when the pilot was going on, it cost $700 plus a $7 per month service fee mm -hmm. <laughs> subscription. But now the company has moved to a full, what they're calling subscription model, um, where it will cost you again, $19.95 a month for 48 months, or you could pay $215 approximately for a year for four years. So um, it says that it's aimed at uh, fleet customers and commercial vehicles, which I guess kind of makes sense. Um, and it ditches Bluetooth and battery, but adds GPS and backlighting. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know. It's, I kind of get where they're going with this, 
but I don't know how they are going to get people to add another subscription when you can just pay the $20 for the metal plate and have it mailed to you. Um, you could make an argument, you know, um, property, um, these digital, uh, e ink displays are probably harder to counterfeit, uh, while they can probably be stolen. I'm pretty sure there's some sort of way that it is tied to the car or tied to the user to where even if somebody steals it, almost like a phone nowadays, if somebody they need steals to shut it iPhone, down or you can't use it. Right, right. And the worst, the best you could do is uh, sell it for parts, which I don't know how many parts are in this eating thing. So maybe it's a deterrent from people stealing license plates and put them on other cars. And number two, uh, if you think about the technology for license plates, it is kind of basic. Outdated. Yeah. It hasn't changed in years. And this is a natural progression of a the, the license plates being digital to where, you know, uh, police uh, can probably look up the information faster via um, a e-ink display. I think they all they mentioned that. um Something about making uh, old um, uh, uh, license plates readers obsolete. I'd have to find mm -hmm. out exactly where I read that. But with e-ink displays for license plates, I'm pretty sure there's technology that can come along with it that would make it easier for uh, city officials, police officers, emergency services, things of that nature to recognize license plates faster which yeah. could cut down on the amount of traffic stops. You know, if I'm thinking, if I'm putting my- Or incorrect traffic stops. If I'm if I'm putting my uh, African-American- Hat on. <laughs> hat on, <laughs> which I can't take it off, but you know what I'm, Never. You know what I'm getting, right? Yeah. Um, yep. Less reasons for cops to pull me over, right? Right. You know, me in personally. Theory. Right. Me personally in theory, because- the one reason why I, I, cops pull you over is because something's wrong with the tags. Well, if it's yeah. a digital tag, then there's no reason to pull me over. Um, quicker, it's easier for them to identify who I am before they have to pull me over and ask for license and registration. You know, I can't if I was, you know, being riding dirty, you mm. know, and I took a license plate off of somebody else's car and put it on mine, you know, I can't do that because like I mentioned before, it's tied to the car, yada, yada, yada. So there's a lot of things that would make this attractive. Ultimately, yeah, they do say they do say in the article that you can switch the display to other messages via a smartphone app if the vehicle is stolen or display Amber Alert. So if your car right. is stolen, you can change the plate to say, I'm stolen. Right. And if yeah. so... If this is if this is heavily or widely adopted, a car driving down the road without this license plate because somebody has stolen it and they don't want it to be tracked, that should immediately fire off a red flag for police yeah. officers. Again, that only wrong. if that something's wrong. Again, only if it's widely accepted, which goes right. back to your original point. Is people paying twenty dollars a month for this? We don't know. When they can get a free one. Well, not a free one, but one that costs twenty dollars. One time, um, I did read something interesting in the article as well. They said that um, for this license plate that um, um, it says a malfunctioning digital license plate would be a correctable violation. The law also requires a process for frequent notification if the digital plate breaks or needs replacing. Also, altering, forging, counterfeiting, or other hacking of the plate will be a felony. So that's, I guess, right. another deterrent from trying to take it. But again, right. it all, to me, it all boils down to money. Are people going to um, see enough value you know, while, in order to pay for yeah. it? Yeah. Right. To right. pay, you know, a monthly fee for this. And is it going to work the way it's, yeah. And is it going to work the way they say it's going to work? Like you mentioned, right. if it breaks, if it needs replacing, uh, things of that nature, Will people, w w will it make it process easier to get a replacement tag, right? Because right. I'm not about to pay $20 a month. And if something happens, I'm on the hook. Or 
it doesn't work the way it's supposed to because they mentioned uh, frequent notification. Who's going to do the frequent notification? The DMV, yeah. the DMV that the current DMV that exists now. Are they As going to right? Are they going to put forth that extra effort to make sure I'm notified via email or text message or whatever the case may be that something's wrong right. with my plate? You know, <laughs> yeah. a lot of things to be considered. But yeah, overall, and especially when you're black and brown, you don't want to add anything extra that might get you pulled over. And I can right. see a lot of possible extras. Right. On the flip side. right? Someone like me to get pulled over. Right. So, yeah. But ultimately, like I said, um, traditional license plates are kind of outdated. Yeah. So eventually. Now, if this is gonna... mandated through the state that you have to go to this, then I could see. Okay. But mm -hmm. the state's not paying for this. You would have to pay for it unless the state takes this on and say, we'll give you a contract. We'll pay you X amount of dollars for X amount of cars. But if they're doing subscription based, I don't think the government is going to take that on. And they need to find out a way to roll this into the registration because I'm not about to pay. I forget how much it is in Georgia, but it ain't cheap for the annual registration. Uh, well, no, I'm not saying not cheap. I think it's like, what is it, $50 or something like that? I don't remember Wait. what it is. I don't know. Because um, I always get my last minute. I never remember. Right. So in in, in the state of Georgia, we got to get admissions every year. We got to yep. pay for the registration every year. This is another thing on top of that. They need to figure out how to roll that all into one thing. Then that would be a little bit more pal palatable for people who you know are interested in this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a neat concept, but in practicality, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. So that is going to wrap it up for second string.